is the last of its territory. The State Department wants countries to bring home foreign fighters. What's happening there? Yeah, and there's this issue of those from other countries who were fighting with ISIS, Americans who are with ISIS in Syria, and the State Department calls that situation extremely difficult. One of those cases is that of Hoda Mathana. Uh, she's a college student in Alabama when she left in 2014 to join the Islamic State. She eventually married ISIS fighters. She surrendered to coalition forces as an in a refugee camp in Syria. Her case is part of this broader issue, what to do with those who left their countries to join ISIS. The State Department says it wants other countries to bring home their fighters to face justice. And a spokesperson says Americans who joined ISIS should expect the same. Our policy uh, in this regard uh, would be um, you know, to, to uh, repatriate them. Um, and that's what we call on uh, all countries to do uh, who, who have a, a FDF fighters uh, in, in Syria. Repatriating these foreign terrorist fighters uh, to their countries of origin, ensuring uh, that they are prosecuted and detained, that's, that's the best solution to preventing them from returning to the battlefield. Um, we view these fighters as a global threat. For weeks publicly, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has said to countries that have fighters who were captured fighting in Syria, they should bring them back to their countries, try them, and in his words, punish them. Sandra? Rich Edson at the State Department. Thank you, Rich. Meanwhile, the mother of a journalist killed by the Islamic State weighing in on the Alabama woman who joined the terror group now coming, wanting to come home. James Foley was beheaded by ISIS in the summer of 2014, nearly two years after he'd been abducted in Syria. His mother telling Fox News that Hoda Muthana, who left the U.S. and married the ISIS fighter, now needs to pay for her actions. We all make mistakes and need to consider forgiveness, particularly for her young child needs to be protected and raised. However, um, Hoda and the many thousands of other ISIS fighters um, who have promoted terrorism need to be held accountable and brought to justice. So Muthana, who, was, who has an 18-year-month-old son, used Twitter to call for violence against Americans and non-Muslims. She now claims that she had been brainwashed overseas. We'll see where that goes. On to this story we've been following. Chicago police still waiting to re-interview Jesse Smollett as new reports claim the Empire actor may have been involved in faking a racist letter sent to him on the set of his own show. Harvey Levin is the founder of TMZ. TMZ broke this story. Harvey, good morning to you. Welcome. Good morning, Harvey. What Thanks, can, guys. What can you tell us this morning? What are we learning about this bizarre story? Well, uh, as to the letter, there are developments on a bunch of fronts, but as to the letter, um, it is true that the FBI initially, uh, when the letter was received at Fox Studios in Chicago, uh, the FBI looked at it. Uh, for some reason, they backed off it once this alleged attack occurred. They are back on it. Now, the one thing that I can't say is that the, that the FBI is now targeting Jesse as the sender of the letter. Um, they are just reopening this investigation. Okay, Harvey, now, you, know, you, um, you broke this story in the very beginning. Why did you believe it? I didn't say I believed it. Um, what we said was, this is what Jesse said. I never said I believed it. We reported what Jesse said happened. Um, I can tell you that um, from the beginning, police had suspicions. We knew about the suspicions, but they, on the record, were saying okay. we consider uh, him understood. a victim. So but when you first went to print with this story online, you had Jesse's right. version of events. Right. D did you run that by police in Chicago before you went online with it? Absolutely. And as a matter of fact, they said we, are consi we consider him a victim of this crime. And they maintained that for almost two weeks. Okay, she mentioned the letter now. What else is suspicious today or what else is new today? Well, what's new is it looks like this case may go to the grand jury as early as today. Um, and the, um, the brothers who say that they were paid by Jesse uh, to concoct this scheme um, are going to go before the grand jury. Uh, they did not receive immunity. They were not subpoenaed. They're doing it all voluntarily. And they met with prosecutors yesterday, presumably, uh, to go over some of the things that they're going to tell grand jurors. But the focus of the grand jury investigation is um, whether Jesse should be indicted uh, for a 
felony, which is filing a false police report. Right, because right now the Chicago police want to re-interview him. That invitation's been out there for multiple days now, and he's not shown. Yeah, and we are, t look, we are told that what he needs to do um, to avert a grand jury is literally a Hail Mary where somehow he comes up with something that makes the police believe it. It's just not going to happen. And as a matter of fact, um, I have no doubt Jesse is not going to talk to the police again. I think he's done with that. Um, it, it just doesn't make any sense given where this is right now. And we're being told by law enforcement the second he refuses to go, it goes immediately to the grand yeah, jury. A um, couple questions here, Harvey. Um, did he bring his story to you first? Is that how that began? No. Um, as a matter of fact, there was a website, an obscure website, that um, broke this thing um, vaguely, uh, that there was an attack. And we saw that, and then we started calling various people from his camp. And it took a couple of hours until we finally, you know, got at least his side of this story. But it was, um, it was a web, I, and I forgot the name of it now, but it was a website uh, that posted this several hours after the alleged incident yeah. happened. You know, you're, in your business, you cover Hollywood. Did, did you know about his reputation in Hollywood? Were you a little on the fence at all, given his past history? Absolutely not, Bill. Um, Jesse is a well-liked person, both on and off the Empire set. Um, there was absolutely, I, people are stunned. I mean, uh, they're still stunned. They can't make sense of this. Uh, but um, there was absolutely no clue um, that we had and that anybody we've talked to throughout this whole thing had uh, that something like this could go down. Have you tried to explain to yourself uh, after that description of this man why we are where we are today and why this story has taken these bizarre twists and turns? I mean, look, I'm not a psychologist, so I'm not going to pretend to do that. I think anybody who does is irresponsible. But um, I, I will say this, that the brothers have said that Jesse felt that he should, get, he should have gotten more traction in terms of outrage over that letter that was sent. Yeah. Uh, and again, we don't know who sent it, but felt that there should have been more traction. And that's what the brother says. Yeah. Uh, they're insinuating strongly, at least, that just, that was the motivation. Harvey, just one last question here. When you have watched the developments that have taken hold of the country's imagination over the past week, uh, do you play back any of the events in your own mind as to how you originally reported this and perhaps have maybe a sense of apprehension in the future when stories like these cross? I would absolutely report that story again, Bill. I'm not even sure I understand your question. Mm -hmm. Of course I would well, report the, the that story. I, the You've got a, you, no, I, I oh, oh, hold on, hold on. Hold okay, on. You got an actor. I, I you, 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 well, no, I mean, you asked the question. You got an actor who says that he was the victim of a homophobic, racist, uh, racist attack. The police say we're treating him as a victim and we're investigating. Why would we not do that story? Right. Last question. What do you think about the reaction of those who have pulled back some of their initial reaction to uh, the situation in Chicago? Yeah. I mean, th there are two ways of looking at this. One is, are you reporting the story? Of course you're reporting the story. I mean, that's not even an issue. But people who made judgments about the story, that I believe it's true, that, you know, all of that, you know, that's where you got a problem, that people jump to conclusions just hearing allegations now. And that's where we are right now in our society. That's a big problem. That is a Harvey, big problem. And there are a lot of people who did that, and now they're pulling it back. But in terms of reporting it, I'd do exactly that again. Before we let you go, are you still in communication with, as you referred to, his team? Are you still communicating with them? Well, we, yeah, we're talking to a lot of people here. Um, and they're not saying a whole lot right now. I don't think they know quite what to do. Um, it looks to me like Mark Garagos may be representing him. We can't get to the bottom of it, but there are certainly rumblings of that. So, yeah, we're trying to get information, but it's sparse on his side. Mark Garagos, the well-known attorney out of L.A. Uh, Harvey, thank you for your time. You're saying grand jury today. We'll see if that's the case in Chicago. Thank maybe, you, sir. Maybe today. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Harvey Levin from TMZ. Thanks, Harvey. Thank you, sir. 15 past the hour. Now let's move on. Another day, another